Hello, it's Mariah Aliza with Mariah Shelley Village and today I am back shooting a video to share um, our science selections for the 2018-2019 school year. This school year I'm going to teach science together um, to both my rising 4th grader and my rising 7th grader and I decided to write the course myself so I had to compile everything on my own. I did not write everything. Um, I just found resources online and in print um, and put it together to match what I had wrote for them, if that makes sense. So, and why I did that is because they were asking for like an agricultural science. They wanted to learn more about plants and herbs and when they're supposed to take them and what do they do for the body and all of that because I tend to do a lot of that for them. I'm like, oh, well, just take peppermint for this or go, you know, drink some ginger tea for this. And so they wanted to learn a little bit more about that. So I had to write out a course for them because I didn't find anything that existed um, quite the way I wanted to teach them and that they wanted to learn it. So let me go through that first and I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what we're using in order to accomplish that. So the first thing that I want to share is if I had to name this course, it'll be a mouthful. It'll be something like Bio, Agricultural, and Herbal Science with Health and Nutrition and Sex Ed. <laughs> and the reason for that was they wanted to start in the ground and go all the way to the body. And so my task was to figure out how we're going to do that. And so I started with the ground, like the soil and how do we plant um, food. Like, that's the, the agricultural part. How do you plant food? And then I have one son who particularly has a knack for business. So I went a little further into how do you grow food and then how can you monetize from growing food? Um, the different quality of how you need to grow your food when you're trying to um, sell it, right? And then with that, more than just food, also herbs. So learning how to grow food and learning how to grow herbs kind of side by side, learning which foods are really good medicines and which herbs, well, for the most part, herbs are medicinal, but learning which herbs um, you need to grow or take in order to treat like common, you know, discomforts and um, diseases and things like that. And um, knowing how to grow it and knowing what form it needs to be in to treat whatever you're trying to treat. Like some things are better in powder form or right off the plant or in a tea, etc. So that's really what they wanted to, to learn. And then on to stack on top of that, excuse me, um, we I added some health and nutrition in terms of um, your how do we eat? Like what times of day do we eat? What foods do we pair with each other? to um, be our best optimal selves and to help our organs do what they need to do to not go against that, right? And then kind of the last leg is um, sex education. So kind of understanding the reproductive system to be a, another system of the body. So actually, and I, I should kind of back up, it's not just sex um, education. They actually get the whole body. So they learn the nervous system, the skeletal system, the um, digestive system, the muscular system, the reproductive system. It's just the reproductive system is the last one we do so that I can segue right into um, to sex ed. So learning those different systems, what do they do singularly? How, how do they connect to the system? I'm going to say above or below because it's kind of working together like in a circadian rhythm in a, like a little clock or a circular fashion and then how does it help like at large all of your systems together and then we're segueing into um, sex ed. I teach sex ed every year. I teach the same thing every year and then I add a new layer for that particular age and maturity level. So my rising fourth grader is going to get the same thing that my oldest son had when he was in fourth grade. My seventh grader is going to get what he's always had plus I'm adding a little bit more. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to turn the camera around now and share with you um, our resources and the binder that I put together. All right, so here are the resources that I have selected for this hodgepodge course that I'm teaching. Actually, in our state, there is um, 
a course called Bio Agricultural Science. So that is how I'm classifying it, at least for my rising seventh grader, because he can start to attempt credit towards high school at this age. So there's that. Okay, so our probably two main staples are going to be a kid's herb book for children of all ages by Leslie Tierra. Looks like this, and I'm going to show you the inside of it here in a little bit. And then our next um, staple or main text is going to be Agricultural Science, a course for secondary schools in the Caribbean. So I, I purchased this curriculum from a Caribbean um, publisher, but I'm okay with that because I wanted the content that was in here. Um, and the book isn't like a thousand pages, as you can see. So for the most part, um, the first part of the course, I have it split into three, like how I shared earlier. The for, And we um, complete science three days out of the week. So we're going to do agricultural science out of this book the first two days, and then we're going to have it backed up with support out of the herb book. So here's what our agricultural science book looks like. I'm going to go to the table of contents with you really quickly and then let you see. So... Starting over here, an introduction to agriculture, an introduction to agriculture resources, human resources in agriculture, the design process in agriculture, technology in agriculture. Beginning over here, chapter six, natural resources, land and soil, the plant, plant processes, field crop, cultivation, tools and equipment, rearing of farm animals, poultry, natural resources and agricultural time, abiotic factors in the environment, and then we're closing with biotic factors in um, the environment. So here's kind of what the book looks like. And you may see some of my handwriting or note taking in the margin. I didn't do that much of it because this is for um, my son, the one that I have. I kind of marked all up. But that's what that looks like. You got a good view of it there. And it comes with a CD-ROM. It's still in my computer because I was using it to Put things um, together for them. So this is our main um, text, as well as a kids' art book. A kids' art book is not in it's not in um, color, so you have to be okay with that. But I do like the herbs that it goes over, so I will um, read them off to you. Lemon balm, fennel. I believe you pronounce that mullein. Garlic, plantain, chamomile, comfrey, slippery elm, echinacea, licorice, ginger, elder, calendula, cinnamon, dandelion, and um, yarrow. As you can see there. So here is pretty much um, the layout or the design of the book. We need to get past plants are our friends because that one works a little bit differently. All right, here we go. So it kind of starts like this. It gives you an introduction to whatever herb or the quality of that herb there. And then it gives you some information about the plant. So in this case, the lemon balm plant, it gives you uses, um, the uses of lemon balm, touch and feel. It gives you like some type of, uh, recipe to follow whether it's a tea or a cough drop or a tincture it gives you that and and see in this one we make a tea as well so there's a few it's like two or three pages each for each herb and an herbal scene then it gives you like some ancient and scientific information and then you read a story um about that herb right so and then and then it kind of ends with a song so i'll show it to you again so that you can See it here is with fennel, so it's pretty much the same format uses, you know, what it's good for, what have you, and then it gives us things to make um, some ancient and scientific information again, so we can make fennel candy or we can make a brew. Um, fennel is also a flea bomb, so we can make tooth powder or a bean bag blast, and then we get a story um, about that um, herb, and sometimes we get a song, so I guess we don't. For fennel. So that's the progression of that. Um, one of my favorite things with this book is it tells me if it's hot or if it's cold. And we also have a vocabulary back there, which I really, really like um, because they're actually going to chart that together. 
You see, it gives me the herb energy. So calendula is warm, cayenne is hot, chamomile is neutral. And um, see, it talks about hot illnesses and cold illnesses. And I think that's very good um, for them to learn. And then they kind of give us uh, a reference chart back here with symptoms, right? So I, I want to now introduce two other resources that we're using. One is called the nature journal. So after they finish learning about an herb, they are going to, and this one's for my fourth grader, so it still has the dash lines. The one for my seventh grader, the lines look a little bit different. So like that. But what they're going um, to do is like, tell me the temperature or the climate, excuse me, that this herb grows best in, um, its ancient location slash um, the location that it will grow in like here in the States. And then they're going to draw a picture of it and then kind of write down some uses for it um, or some discomforts or diseases that it will treat. So that's why I like this reference here so they can easily go, oh, I got a bug bite. Well, that's comfrey, echinacea, or plantain. And then they can make their best decision as they skim back through their notes and look through, right? The other thing that I wanted to introduce with that is this book here, which we're going to use this as a reference where there is no doctor, a village healthcare handbook. I also have another one by Dr. Um, um, Africa. Um, I don't have it in this video to show, so I'll just put the um, image of it up um, in the video because it's going to go through different ailments, right? So... Oh, well, that's labor. We won't get into that. But it goes through different elements. Like if you got a bug bite or if you have a stomach ache or whatever, it'll help. And so it's a book that teaches you how to take care of people specifically in a village where there is like no modern medicine. Okay, so this is a kid's herb book. I've shared agricultural science. I've shared the Nature Journal. I got these off of um, Etsy. We're also, my fourth grader is going to be using the magic school bus or reading the magic school bus inside the human body for human body studies. He's also going to, um, well, I'm going to read this to him before I was born. It's a part of the guy, God's Design for Sex series. I like book one and book two. After that, not so much. So this will be our last um, book in this series. It's my youngest child. Um, we are also going to... Um, read the boy's body book. I've had this one for a while with my oldest one and I mean you can use this book for years so I'll be using certain topics out of it for my youngest and then I'll be finishing some some of it out for my oldest but you see it starts with the change in body so growth spurts and um, genital changes and morning surprises and body hair pretty typical for um, his age and then it kind of goes and progresses on through age like acne and shaving that won't be until much later sports and um the body change in the outside world changes at home feelings and friends um staying safe in the virtual world and then stressful situations so we'll be using that um both of my sons like to cook and so i got the cooking with herb the vegetarian dragon a cookbook for kids so they can apply some of that so i'll show you all of these um, recipes are herbal in some way. So grandmama floral spaghetti sandwich and pasta and sauce for the grand snack dragon. You'll see that it uses um, herbs. So here, I mean, our quesadillas. But there's chili powder. And I actually learned about that in one of their um, um, lessons. There are herbs they learn about. There's cumin powder, whatever. So you get the the idea and so it's herbal in the recipes and so that's why I chose it um, I've been using this for a while too I've been using it since I start first started teaching sex ed and human anatomy so I'm going to continue with this an illustrated adventure in human body we just continue I like it because it goes through the systems very good the different body parts and ascribing it to the correct system so we're going to continue to use that. I also have the Us Born um, Complete Book of Human Body. We'll use this as a reference as well. And then I have the Anatomy Coloring Book because they like to color. They still do it even though they're a little older. And 
Um, for sex ed, we're going to use It's So Amazing, a book about eggs, sperms, birth, babies, and families. Um, I've used this um, with my oldest in years past. We're going to continue to use it because, like the other books, um, the topics, you know, advance quite well. So you could very well use a book like this for a couple of years. But it starts very simple with Meet the Bird and the Bee. Um, it kind of progresses down into um, female and male genitalia, um, what do eggs do and sperms do, um, making love, making a baby. I think I left off right at chromosomes with my um, sixth grader last year. So we're going to go, I think he's going to finish the book. Yeah, he's going to finish the book this um, in seventh grade, rising seventh grader. Okay, so that's the books that we're using. So now I'm going to walk through my binder with you a little bit. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to walk through the binder a little bit with you. My grade 7 and grade 4, uh, the base is the same, but there are some differences just based on skill and interest. But I'm going to walk through the grade 7 binder with you because it's just, it's more thorough. So I find it better to just to show you everything and you can... Take out what doesn't work, then to have you adding. So here's our cover, Bioagricultural and Herbal Science with Health and Nutrition and Sex Ed Notebook. So the first, you see I split into threes. So the first um, tab here is going to deal more with the agriculture and herbal science. So the majority of this um, I got online or I got on Teachers Pay Teachers or I just put it together myself. So we're talking about farm practices. We live in the state of Georgia, so Georgia agriculture, the difference between an herb and a weed and spice, natural resources. Um, every so often, they ha you're going to see like a research page like this where they research about a particular um, crop or a farm animal. In this case, it's corn and tomatoes. And they have a, a map here to create their own legend about where does it grow for these type of pages. Um, Herbs of the Magic Garden, we're going to do a little bit of research on calendula rose, ginger, chamomile, and sunflower seeds. Again, with that crop research, watermelon and grapes. Um, I took this lesson out of The Good and the Beautiful when we learned about groundwater. Um, this is a TPT um, unit where we're learning about layers of soil. And then I have some like from the field to the grocery store to the table activities that I got from TPT. Um, so this is, you know, like, gee, how did that get here? The chocolate chip cookie. We have others like that. Learning about monocot, dicot, cotton and peanuts for crop research again. Um, we're going to do some research on bananas. Um, the banana debate and then a banana web quest. Um, classifying plants, basically like flowering plants, non-flowering plants. Another G, how did that get there? Bread, um, crop research, rice and potatoes. Crop, re no, this isn't crop more um, farm research, beef, cattle, and milk. How did that get there? Cheese, um, simple machines in the garden. We're going to do a research page with that. And then if you remember from the agricultural book that I showed you, they had some a whole chapter on raising poultry. So I had to find a unit. I found this online um, with chickens. So the incubation period, chick development, all of that, different types of breeds. So basically, I just matched it up to the information that's in um, their book. Um, this is a craftivity we're going to put together. I'll show it online when we get to it. Um, talking about when to best grow foods and which seasons and which month. Um, we're going to do a research on a local fruit or vegetable that's native here to our state in Georgia. Um, where do these items come from? Just learning like which items, which household and everyday items do we use that comes from corn, sheep, cattle, and pig. Um, abiotic and, and biotic factors, if you remember in the book. So basically, again, I just am lining that up pretty well. Um, some more research, chicken and eggs. And then towards the end, we're going to kind of divvy a little bit into agricultural chemistry where we're going to kind of create our own bug repellent using lots of the herbs we would have learned about. Um, so that's that. I got that off TPT as well. And then at the end, 
um, which herbs assist or heal these organs? So muscles, they should be able to put in those herbs. Brain, put in those herbs. Kidneys, etc. Work their way around. This is kind of like a um, summative assessment that I'm using for this. Then we're going to move into health and nutrition. Um, starting with the government, choose my plate. I actually, ours looks a little bit different. I'm having it designed, so I don't have it to show right now. But I wanted them to see... The government healthy plate as well as what we would consider a healthy plate just being um, African in descent and following a Hebraic diet. So this isn't long at all. This is probably going to be the shortest unit. Probably lasts us about three weeks. Looks like this. Um, and see, they're going to create their own plate based on those things that I just said. Um, and then we have like food, energy, eating on time. Um... And then we're going to end it with the grocery store scavenger hunt, which I got this unit off TPT as well. Then we're going to move into human anatomy and sex ed. Um, these sheets are already prepped for them, but I don't have them in, in, the, um, in the notebook because it's scattered. Like the brain and the bladder don't have anything to do with each other. So I can tell she just put it together for spacing. So we're just going to pull it out as we need it throughout the course. But this is starting with, you know, about me. I used some worksheets from um, The Good and the Beautiful and then some worksheets from Kiki's Classroom on Teachers Pay Teachers. So basically we're going to walk through each system, the skeletal system, and you're going to see a, a combination of those two resources that I just shared. The mus muscular system, the respiratory system, right? So it's following the same thing, the circulatory system, and they're going to learn those key organs in all of those um, in the body, right? Brain, digestive system, which is like stomach and large intestines, urinary system, um, the immune system, and then we're going to move on to the reproductive system. We're going to kind of conclude with all our systems work together and then move on to the reproductive system. I got this off of TPT as well, just the vocabulary page for them. And then um, the reproductive system, this is an, another TPT unit that I, I got. So, you know, the whole eggs and sperm and embryo and fertilization. Um, I found this unit to be very appropriate, very kid friendly. And then just some diagrams of what the male and female reproductive system looks like. And that's going to cut off for my rising fourth grader my rising seventh grader is going to go a little further into puberty and like um i think i chose like five or six std slash stis to talk about so you see this is a little bit more into healthy relationships and puberty there's going to be abstinence sexual health that type of thing um what is an std sti and then i believe i chose eh, five or six let's see I know I chose human pap, herpes, um, chlamydia, gonorrhea, hep B, um, pubic lice, and then we're closing out with the um, HIV virus and um, preventing um, pregnancy, abstinent, sexual health. He has like some reflection questions on that, right? And then that's going to finish out um, the year. And then in the back here, I've just kind of already prepped like little mini booklets or charts or diagrams he'll need to reference. Um, this is more like reproductive and this is more um, human body. And this is a combination of things that I put together, TPT and the good and the beautiful. So that's pretty much um, what that will look like. I chose the flex binders. I know I'm gonna add to this throughout the year. I just wanted to get a good base. So I could, cause I knew I had to write it and put it together myself. So that is what we are doing for science grade four and grade seven for the 2018-2019 school year. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, shalom.